Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, today I'm going to do uh, kind of a spinoff of my uh, video from a few weeks ago about the Artemis group. Uh, I had a lot of parents reach out asking about uh, kind of spirited boys um, and I don't want to exclude the boys at all. Um, I'm just the Artemis group is kind of near and dear to me because my daughter and um, and I happen to have a lot of clients that um, have daughters in the Artemis group, but there is a group there. Are, there are, in fact, many groups all over the world with different kind of oversoul networks um, that are focused on different things. So no group is any better than the other. They're all different for a specific purpose um, as to what their soul is kind of joining forces uh, with or for. Uh, in order to help with the ascension. Um, and so I know of multiple uh, boy groups. Uh, the only reason I don't do a specific video on one in particular is because I think I have such a variety um, of boys in these kind of various groups that it's not enough. It's not like I don't have enough um, boys in one particular group like I do the Artemis group to focus solely on that and write a chapter in my book. But I do have a lot of spirited boys that fit the Artemis group to a T, but they're not necessarily in that group, but that doesn't mean that there aren't boys exactly like I explained in the Artemis group that um, come in for a different purpose. So I wanted to do a separate video on that for those of you out there that have sons that are very high spirited, stubborn. Um, they, they don't take no for an answer. They don't, they want explanations for everything. And then even when you give them explanations, they want more. Um, they have trouble getting along with other, other boys and girls. And not only in their age group, sometimes they challenge adults. Um, often they challenge the adults a, a lot, actually. And their teachers, sometimes they get in trouble or they'll be called troublemakers because they're very misunderstood, much like the Artemis group. These boys are pioneers of many movements. They're innovators. They're the architects of the new world. They are going to bring in new technology um, and they are the leaders of the future. Uh, so they really have to have tough skin. They have to be really resilient um, in order to combat the 3D interference. You know, the, the, the 3D interference in general as a whole, like I talked about in my book and I've broken down in many videos um, in, on, on this channel and in interviews, that that's the challenge. So it's not just one thing. It's a lot of, it's a plethora of different things on a spectrum of, of variances and, and, and severity and, and how we're targeted uh, is there, it comes from a lot of different directions. Uh, so children knowing these evolved souls that come in as children know in advance that they are going to have to deal with a lot of this stuff and also a lot of the program people don't forget the 3D interference also includes the NPCs and the and the extremely programmed people that uh, many of them are children. So, you know, there are a lot of children at school that are replicating or mirroring their parents behavior and their limiting beliefs because that's what they came into. And you know, and some of them could be starseeds that they are having a, a really difficult time navigating through their parents programming and the televisions programming and this and the children um, at, at school and the bullies and all of this. So they are uh, succumbing to the pressures of 3D, like I call, uh, you know, this peer pressure, this 3D peer pressure. So not star, star seeds by any means are not perfect. Nobody is perfect. There is no such thing as perfect. So my daughter always asks me, you know, or, or, or makes comments, oh, I'm not perfect. And I always, every single time, 100%, I say, Aramis, there's no such thing as perfect. There, there is nothing uh, perfect about anybody. And that's actually the beautiful thing. We, we don't want to be perfect. Otherwise, we have no reason to be here. The whole purpose of living, the whole purpose of the life sparks splitting off um, the fractals of God, of, of the um, source creator, source consciousness, is so that we can have experiences, some that are negative and more challenging the, than others, and we work through different problems and, and all of these things, and that's the point of it. So we, we don't want to be perfect. We don't strive for perfection, although many people do, um, and that's that's the biggest um hiccup in their life. The biggest challenge is that they think there is such thing as perfection, probably because their parents told them and they, and, and the parents are working through their own program. So, you know, the bar always gets higher and we never actually achieve what we set out to, because then once we achieve something, then it's like, okay, well uh, now you got to do this. And it never stops. 
Um, and so you, you think about the two contrasts, we have the perfection contrast to the evolutionary contrast. So I believe in the evolutionary contrast, meaning we strive to be better all the time. We're constantly learning, we make mistakes, but it, it, it gives us more wisdom um, and, it, and it shifts our perspective. It alters our consciousness. All of those things are good if we take those as life lessons and we learn from them and we evolve. So it's not, we're not striving for perfection. We're striving for evolution. Um, and those that are perfectionists are coming from ego or a sense of self-validation or validation of others or a combination of those. And they are um, competing with themselves essentially, and they'll never achieve uh, this perfection. We will never achieve the evolutionary status that we want in this particular life either, but that's not the goal. The goal is to experience and, and, and really the more evolved we are as a collective, we will showcase that by being less egocentric and more community-based. So, you know, if I know all of these things, in, instead of hoarding it for myself, how can I help others learn what I know? Also, how can I learn from others that know something that I don't? That's how we evolve. That's how we work as a community. But this 3D reality is not based on those principles for the most part. Um, so they want us all to feel like we're in lack and we're not worthy and we're always seeking validation outside of ourselves. So that's kind of a message for humanity in general um, and a theme of what we're all kind of up against and what we're working through. Um, but back to my original point, a lot of star seeds struggle coming in here because they have to deal with all of this programming. So the, you know, they're constantly told by their families um, to be a certain way or to do a certain thing. And boys typically are told, you know, be a big boy, you don't cry. Um, and, you, and, and they're, they're programmed with so many layers um, of imprints, of, of negative imprints and thought forms and limiting beliefs that uh, the boys really struggle. And I think that that's why a lot um, of bullies surface, because they are um, pushed by their families or neglected, not given love, and they're just seeking attention, you know, bad attention. Um, parenting 101, even when your children, we yell at our children and we they do bad things, they, the reward for them is getting mom and dad's or caregiver or grandparents atten or siblings attention, even if it's negative, because all they want is attention. All of us seek some sort of um, love in some shape or form doesn't mean it's always healthy. And uh, a lot of the children get, you know, have behavioral issues because they just want some attention and parents are so busy in their phones or at work, or they're just not good parents and they're very neglectful or they don't, they're not loving, they're not nurturing, they're not supportive. They're very self-centered, very ego-driven. Maybe they have addiction issues that they're working through um, or traumas they're working through or depression or anxiety of their own 3D interference and they can't be there for their children. Doesn't always mean they don't love them. And there are many parents that shouldn't be parents and they struggle and, and they genuinely don't wanna be parents. and they don't love their children. And um, unfortunately that happens as well uh, as a result of so many different variables. So to combat, combat all of these things, sometimes we need souls to come in that are like really self-driven um, and are powerhouses and just kind of wrecking balls coming through, like, like a bowling ball going through it to knock down all the pins, to, to break people out of their programming or to break people out of these these this hypnotic state or or this the programming that that they're in, uh, and they come across as very arrogant or stubborn or misbehaved, and a lot of people will look at them and say, you know, get control of your child. You should spank them. Uh, you know, everyone has their two cents on how they should raise uh, children that aren't their own, um, based on television and and how they were raised, etc. For many <laughs> many different things, um, but. I'm telling you, they are just as as divine and unique and beautiful as the Artemis group. So this demographic, this group of children that are boys um, come in with the divine feminine and the divine masculine aspects of themselves that they're working through. The, the female group comes in with a strong divine feminine, but they have to have that masculine energy to keep them driven, to keep them strong, to keep them motivated so that they stand up even to their parents and to adults to say, hey, I don't think you're right. I think you should reevaluate, although they don't talk like that a lot of times when they're younger. So they act out and they scream and say, no, um, that's wrong or I hate you, mom or you know, I, I, I hate my family. You know, I just want everyone to know, regardless if it's a male or a female or what group, 
any child across the board that says something like that, you know, imagine the, the most horrible thing that we say when somebody, when we're mad at somebody and we're in a heated argument and we, and we'll say the worst possible thing that we could possibly think of because we're hurting and we need to reflect that hurt so that the other person recognizes um, the validity in our, uh, our position of anger, sadness, whatever it is. Um, and children do the same thing. The only difference is they don't have the, the bandwidth or the vocabulary or the energy to process and create uh, appropriate statements. And even us adults that do and have much experience still don't to, 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 for the most part, a lot of times. So, but so children are going to say what the, the worst thing they could possibly say, what's the worst thing in their mind? I hate you. I don't want you to be my mom. Why did I choose you? Or they'll, or I hate my brother, or they'll say something really horrible. And then people like, you know, the parents will take it, take it personal. And really, do the child, does the child mean that? No, they don't mean that. But in the moment, they're screaming for somebody to validate them, to give them attention, to give them nourishment that they're seeking in that moment. So they are going to latch out and say the worst possible thing. For us, we'll say cuss words or we'll say even worse things, um, even more hurtful things. Um, but it's the same situation, just two different eras of time and two different age groups. Um, and really, the adults sometimes act just as, as, as immature as young children do um, when we do have a lot of more life uh, experience and wisdom that we could put towards it. But when we get in anger, it just goes to show it doesn't matter your age. When you're in anger mode or you're dropping vibration, um, sometimes, you know, your senses and your, your ability to think clearly um, is kind of goes to the wayside and you just, just thinking angry, you know, and, and that's what the 3d interference wants. They want us to be uh, in that mode where we can't think straight, where we're, where that primal aspect of us comes out and then we're in survival mode and we're attacking. So now we're on the defense. Sometimes we're on the offense. We take turns with the person we're fighting with. Um, and that happens with children. So we have the parents on the offense, the children on the defense, and then the parents switch and they're on the defense. The children are on the, on the offense. It happens all the time. It's just human nature and relationships in general. So we need these high spirited uh, young women and young men uh, to, you know, shake some sense into us to alter our perception a little bit to break us out of the box of programming so that we think in, in a different manner. Now, um, how do you navigate through these high spirited boys? Um, you know, it, it's, it's similar to the girls uh, in, in many respects. So a lot of the boys um, that I've noticed uh, in the quiet space, when it's not in front of other people, um, they want to feel acknowledged and heard. So I'll get you, you know, you get down to their level, um, literally like on the, on the, you know, to their height. So you get on your knees if you're an adult or you sit on a chair. So you're semi, somewhat in the same height. So you're not looking down on them. Um, and you tell them, I hear you. I see you. I understand your frustration. They want that, you know, you don't have to have the magic answer, but sometimes they just want to know that they're heard and they're understood. And I know that you're lacking um, the words or, or the um, ability to articulate what it is that you want me to hear or what you're trying to say. So let's work together. But you have to do it in the moment when the energy, the heightened energy has subsided a little bit. You cannot fight fire with fire. And that's the biggest lesson I've learned with my daughter and a lot of the parents I talk to with girls in the Artemis group. You can't go at them because they have endless energy and in, they will ignite even bigger if they feel resistance from their family or they feel like they're not being heard. So the best thing to do in this situation for boys and girls is, if you can, is to pause and say, I think we both need to take a moment and, and you walk away. One of the biggest um, threats, I think, to most children, but specifically this group, is that they're not, get, they're not being heard, they're not being seen. And in the moment, sometimes you need to use that as leverage. So you say, I, I don't like the way you're talking right now. I understand you're trying to tell me something important, but you're not coming across um, very nice and, and kind. And, and, uh, and that's not acceptable. We need to find a way to regroup and come back where we can say things in a different way. And then I'll hear you out. Um, it's very hard to do that in the moment of, of, of heat. So even if you don't say all that, you just say, I need a minute and you walk away. And you um, 
you take your space, you, you separate and you go into another room, you tell them to go to their room or whatever you can do to diffuse the situation. And then you come back and say, okay, mommy's ready to listen. Dad's ready to listen. Now tell me what it was that you're trying to say. And you put your hand on their, you know, their, their hand or, or hug them and say, first of all, mom loves you so much unconditionally. Dad loves you so much unconditionally. Grandmother, lo grandma loves you so much, whatever, grandpa, whatever it is. Um, and you, and you give them the ability to be heard and you don't say a word, you don't critique it and, and finish their sentence with, but, or, you know, I understand, but, um, we, we, we have to allow them to feel the freedom to speak their mind and their truth, uh, without any, any, um, critiquing on our end or the, the follow-up following them up with, well, uh, I understand what you're saying. Um, but but I'm I'm right in this situation because then it'll escalate once again. So there are a lot of boys that are going to be the future leaders of the world that need to have tough skin. They need to stand up to the bullies. They need to tell the teachers they're wrong and the lesson plan they're teaching doesn't make any sense or the way you teach doesn't, I don't like it. I don't fit with it or telling their parents, you know, um, whatever it is that they need to say. They're not always going to come across as a very kind and polite um, person. And that is because they lack those skills in that moment because they have a, a vision. Um, and I, and, and what it is that they want the, the message they want to come across. Uh, and in the moment, they're not thinking about how it's affecting the other person. So that's when it's really vital for both the girls and the boys groups for parents to teach them to be humble and, and to, to ground them as much as possible so that what, that they can acclimate to this reality enough so that they have compassion and empathy for those that are not like them. And then they can think about what they say um, a little bit more thoroughly before, uh, before it comes out. And that, you know, a lot of it just takes age and time. You just give them time. You know, how they talk at five years old might be different than eight and 10 and, and, and so on. Um, but it's constantly just reminding them, giving them an abundance of love and saying, even though you um, just smacked your sister in the face and that was wrong, mommy still loves you unconditionally. Um, and you just remind them that they're still loved and supported no matter what, all the time. Um, and, and even though it's not okay what they did, um, you know, you love them um, anyways, always and forever. And nothing, nothing will change that. Um, and so the uh, leadership skills of these of these boys and girls, but these boys specifically, um, it's going to be a different style. You know, sometimes they may come up across their arrogant that they're not the other boys um, or children who are going to feel like they are uncomfortable around them, and, and they might have a difficult time making friends, just like the girls group. So it's really it's a lot of work on the parents. Uh, part to help find them the right the right group of, of friends to hang out with two fires don't do well together I tell you I'm telling you I've seen it many times over and over in my own family dynamics and friends that have come over you know and it's really hard to have two charged spirited children get along because they both think that their way is the only way they're both very competitive they have to win if they don't win it's not fun they're not enjoying themselves because they're constantly competing one has to outshine the other and that's exhausting for everybody involved, especially the parents trying to trying to be the referee in between and telling them both, no, it's OK. You know, um, the boys group is just like that. Uh, they have to they have to be the winner. So they don't do well sometimes in sports because they get so aggressive. They get so upset. Um, and it's just really, you know, I'm not saying you pull them out of sports, but it's constantly reminding them. And in the moments of quiet, that's the key. You don't combat them when they're in their heightened uh, mo mo moment. Uh, you you fight the fire with just calm and water. Um, I know water sometimes ignites the fire even more, but the point is you bring in this peaceful, calm energy. Um, and sometimes that just means quiet um, where we separate and, and they need, they need their, their, their alone time and their space. Um, and then when they're in the moment of quiet, then you have the opportunity to um, speak with them with reason. Um, and, and it doesn't come across as mom and dad or grandma or caretaker is, or grandpa is attacking them um, because then they, they don't listen. 
um, because they're on the defensive and then they're immediately while you're thinking, they're not listening. They're thinking about the, how they're going to combat what you're saying. Um, and they're going to come up with an excuse of, of why you're wrong. So it's a really delicate dance. And, and I believe that these star seeds choose their families very specifically, very wisely. And you and your, your, the, the family chose ahead of time before they were, were into, came into this reality to, um, to play these specific roles. So, you know, the, the biggest challenge I see working with, with families and even adults, especially those that don't want to forgive, is you don't remember that you asked this soul to come in and play the role of the antagonist um, and you were the victim or vice versa. And in the moment, we don't remember that. So we really hate on that other person for putting us through these certain things. When in reality, we ask for that experience because that's something that we wanted to experience and work through and the challenges and the emotions um, that came with that. And sometimes betrayal is one of those lessons we want to learn. And somebody volunteers to be the betrayer, to be that person that hurts us. Um, and then we spend our whole life resisting and being upset and, and not wanting to forgive that person. And then they hold it in and they get um, autoimmune disease. Um, that happens all the time. So we got to teach our children young that they, um, that, you know, everybody is the way they are for a reason. And people come into our life to teach us things. Sometimes it's not always pleasant, but we respect and love them. Just if, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we allow them to walk all over us and to hurt us because we create boundaries. And if you feel like it's, it's getting to be too much, then you step back and you have to explain to them that sometimes you might be too much and, and that's okay. You're not going to change yourself necessarily to, to, um, so that the other person is happy, but we just create boundaries and we create space and we, um, and we might turn the volume down. Um, sometimes I say, you know, Aramis, just turn down the air energy just a little bit because sometimes it can be a little much for people. So I'm not telling her to change who she is, but in certain circumstances, I'm like, you might want to turn the energy down just a little bit right now. Um, just uh, because I think in this situation, it would be beneficial for everybody because sometimes you might be a little bit too much for them. And that's okay that you are, but in, in, we have to learn to, to um, acclimate in different environments with different um different personality styles. Um, and sometimes, you know, some people get really overwhelmed by strong personalities and, and that's, then they're working through that. So maybe we can help them. So you look at it, you, you teach them that you know, maybe, oh, you're helping them um, by uh, understanding what it's like to be uh, not a strong personality and, and teach them what it's, what to think about what it must be like to be somebody that doesn't speak up. So they understand all facets, facets of personalities. And then when they're in their own space in their home, that's why children act out a majority of the time more when they're at home because they feel like, okay, I'm in my safe space. I could scream, I can yell, I can act out because when I'm at school, I can't do that. When I'm out in public, I can't do that. So when I'm in my safe space at home, you know, I, uh, I'm going to be myself and I'm going to feel safe to do that. So we teach them, yes, that's okay to some degree, but there are still boundaries, still some rules we have to follow, you know, which is why a lot of times, Parents will say, God, my son or daughter is so challenging it's at, at home. But then the teacher says they're the most amazing kid and they listen. That's crazy. Why aren't they like that for me? We well, should take it as a compliment, really, because that means that they're that they are learning from you and they're going out into the world and they are trying to act out what you are teaching them to be, you know, mindful of other people, to be balanced. Uh, to be respectful and kind, but when they get back home and they don't have to be that way and they're free to just kind of, you know, when you get home from work and you just take your shoes off and you put your home clothes on and you lay out on your veg out on the couch, you don't have to worry about what you look like to your coworkers or, you know, sitting proper, or all of these things that we are pr program we need to do and be on for all the people that come by and you have to be really bright and bubbly and, you know, talk to these people in the office. And then when you get home, you're like, ugh. I don't want to talk to anybody. Let me just, you know, be by myself. Well, children do the same thing. The only difference is sometimes um, they want to veg and, and be left alone, but then other times they go crazy. They want to run around the house and get all that energy out that they've been holding in. So again, none of them are right or wrong. Um, this isn't about right or wrong. This is just about understanding your child and why they act the way they act and why they do the things that they do. Um, and this video, uh, I keep bringing it to boys and girls, but this video really was to, to, to help parents with boys that have strong personalities 
um, just like the Artemis group, because there are many. I mean, there are, I have seen some in the Apollo group, in the Zeus group. So there are these like um, uh, Greek mythological energies and, and associated, but then there are other uh, groups of boys that I've seen that are very galactic in um, warrior groups in the sense that they are um, like galactic warriors working in, in, in the astral to fight uh, these galactic wars that are taking place or the attack on the, on the earth um, and on, on the planet itself and, and our people in, the, in this whole ascension process. And they're out there being warrior spirits. So when they're in their day to day, their soul is such a warrior esque type of energy that they don't know what the heck to do in their normal everyday space. So maybe they are really aggressive and they want to just run over and tackle somebody um, because they have this pent up energy that consciously most, not all, but most don't know what they're doing in the astral and, and their, their um, warrior uh, aspect of themselves. So to them, they're just like crazy boys, you know, but um, they don't know why they have this surges of energy that comes in, then they just need to like, you know, attack, you know, wrestle somebody or, or be really aggressive or, you know, something like that. Girls as well. I don't mean to ex ex separate the boys and girls, um, but predominantly right now I'm speaking about the boys. So they will um, kind of have these surges of energy uh, because that warrior spirit's coming in. So it's good to get those type of children in sports or activities like, um, a combat that's safe, like, um, like, uh, karate or, or kickboxing or, you know, something like that, where they're able to, to fight, but in a controlled environment where, where they know they're not trying to hurt somebody. Um, it's just a sport, um, or get them a trampoline. One of the best ways to get energy out is, are, is our trampolines. Now I know they can be very dangerous and this and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but there are things you can do to make them more safe. And, and then obviously supervise them. I mean, my, one of my sons broke his arm on a trampoline fight when he fell off. Now they have those things around them, the protective, what is it called? Protective, um, <laughs> the, the protective, like, uh, <laughs> the protective thing Ah, that's around it. What is it called? Anyways, tell me in the comments. Um, and you know, they also have the exercise ones where they, um, they're just big enough for one or two well, really one person to jump on them and they have a handle and you just hold it and they jump. That's good for toddlers. Um, the protective netting. Wow. I got it. So the protective netting. Um, so, you know, they're safer ones, but, but the point is jumping gets a lot of that energy out, but if they need to like be physically, um, with other children, then you can do wrestling. Now I'm not a big fan of, of football, um, for obvious reasons. I'm tackle football. Now flag football is great. Um, but that's a whole other conversation with the, with the football. So I'm not a big fan of that with the concussions and, and the physical combat and all that. Um, but anyways, the point is they need a, they need a physical outlet. So when they're, when they're, when they're having their moments where they are kind of like on edge, then instead of fighting them and telling them they're bad or what's wrong with you, take them outside and say, all right, we're going to go, we're going to go do, do some sports or put them in sports. Um, other times they just need, they, they're agitated because they need to feel validated. They need, they have this surge of energy and maybe they just need mom or dad to give them some love so that they kind of, it diffuses the bomb. So my favorite thing is to just, you know, when they're acting up, I just go and I say, can mom, can I give you some mommy love? I call it in my house, it's called mommy love. Do you need some mommy love? And most of the time they'll, they'll, no matter how angry they'll be like, yeah. And then they'll come and I'll just give them like a really long hug as long as they'll let me. And, um, and I just tell them how much I love them and nothing to do with what's happening just so they, I'm like, just so you know, I, uh, and, and some children are really open to it. Mine are, but there, I have worked with children and families where I've suggested that and they come back and they say, oh, you know, they don't like to be touched. That's the worst thing. Um, and so I've learned that over the years, like, okay, that doesn't work for everybody. Cause there are children that don't want to be touched or they don't want that. So instead of um, the physical aspect, you just tell them say, I love you so much. I'm so grateful for you. And I know that you're, I know, I know sometimes things can be really rough for you. And I understand that. Is there anything that I can do? Um, and, and let them give you their answer. Don't answer it for them. Don't give them, don't say, can I do these things for you? Say, what, what would it, what would it, how can I help you right now? Um, so anyways, there's a lot, there's a lot more to it than this. There's mu much more I can say than, than in one brief video, but I just wanted to make sure that I didn't ignore 
uh, the boy group, uh, because they're going to grow up and they're going to be, like I said, the innovators, the architects, the, um, the these beautiful leaders of, of, of our new world that we're going, we're stepping into. Um, and they need the families to be humble, to show them what humility looks like, what it is to be compassionate and loving and strong. So they, they learn that aspect of it. I know that my daughter and I are paired together because I am nothing like her energy were complete opposites in fact. So I do my best to teach her about love and I constantly remind her to be kind, to be ground and how to ground um, and to be more humble. And, and I'm, I show her, look, mom's a leader, but I do it, you know, you see how I talk to people. And she said, yeah, mom, you're one of the nicest people I know. And, um, and, and she, she sees what it's like to be a leader that's strong, but also um, kind and, and humble about it. And so she's learning from example for me. And, and, um, and I think a lot of children are paired with families so that one or both of the parents or caregivers are able to, to provide that missing link for them, or they'll have one that's like that and the other like them so that they can also learn from the parent that's like them. So there's lots of different um, factors and variations in this, but just know that your son most likely is not trying to be difficult, is not trying to be arrogant, is not trying to act like they're a know-it-all, but they do genuinely feel in their heart that they, or on some level, they know that they're evolved. They are here for a reason that a lot of times everyone else in the room is wrong and they're right. And they're trying to find a way to explain it to us in a way that they don't get into trouble. Um, and it's challenging. So sometimes it helps me to sit back and, and think, gosh, how hard must it be to be them right now you know and and imagine myself in that situation trying to talk to a parent and explain to them what it is that they're trying to say and then being looked at like a child and how frustrating frustrating that must be so i i really truly do that i try to remind myself uh, to do that and then in the moments where i don't and um and I, and I, the, the moments that I don't do that and I struggle to uh, relate and then I act out and I do something um, that I regret later, then I will, um, I'll, I'll take that as a learning opportunity so that the next time um, I try to, I try to act a little bit better and I try to um, handle the situation a little bit differently. And I'm like, gosh, I, I forgot, I forgot, you know, it must have been really difficult for him or her in that situation to navigate through that. Next time, um, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll try to act, react differently. And then, you know, a lot of times what they want to hear from us is um, that we are able to go back and say, oh, I was wrong. Uh, you know, mom makes mistakes too, dad makes mistakes too. Uh, and we are and I'm working on it and I'm growing and I'm growing too. I'm also evolving. I'm also learning so that they look at us not as per like this perfect um, person that they need to be, but rather look at, look at my mom who um, is, is just human like everyone else and makes mistakes and learns from them though. Um, and doesn't deny it, you know, doesn't try to make excuses you know, we just say, hey, man, I really messed up. I'm sorry. I'm going to do better next time, though. And that's it. And I think that they respect us more for that. So um, I hope this video was helpful for you today. Um, if you um, have any comments or questions, leave them, leave them down below and um, we can start a community chat. Um, but but just take one day at a time um, with with these with these um, young ones, because they're they're just they're up against a lot in this 3D interference. And it's not just the people, it's just the energy that they're up against as well. Um, and so we'll just be compassionate and, and understanding and mindful of, of their journey as well. Um, so I hope that this video was helpful. We'll talk more about it in some more lives because there's way more for me to say that I can't possibly say it all in this short video, but um, this is a good start. And then we'll talk more in, in some of the lives coming up and I can answer some specific questions for anybody watching. So um, until next time, um, I hope to see you guys again really soon. See you guys.